Following our analysis previously of the on-balance volume indicator, I now turn my attention to a similar but subtly different indicator called accumulation distribution. This indicator uses a calculation that possibly represents the reality of the interaction between volume and price action in a better way than on-balance volume does. So does this make it a better predictor of what price action will do next? Well, I'll let you be the judge of that. Stay tuned. Many would consider that the accumulation distribution indicator is an evolved and potentially improved version of the on-balance volume indicator. The reason for this lies in the calculation and the fact that it attempts to represent the reality of the volume data in a better way than on-balance volume does. Let's take a look at this in some more detail. First off, it's worth mentioning what the similarities and differences are between AD and OBV. In terms of similarities, they're both based on a cumulative calculation. And this means that each value of the indicator uses the previous value as its starting point and then either adds or subtracts a value from that to get the new value. A second similarity is that they're both designed specifically to allow the assessment of divergences between price movements and the volume flow. So in other words, if you were interpreting the intelligence that these indicators were giving you from a chart, you'd take exactly the same process to interpreting that. But there are differences. With OBV, as we saw last time, this attributes all of the volume in a given bar to either the buyers or the sellers, depending on whether the price bar has gone up or down. And if you think about it, that's not a realistic representation of the actual volume that took place. So accumulation distribution attempts to rectify that. And it does that by allocating a proportion of the volume depending on the nature of the price bar. So in summary, with OBV, if the price change was up, it attributed all of the volume to the buyers by adding that on to the cumulative value. And when the price bar goes down, it subtracts it. So it effectively allocates that volume to the sellers. And it's this that gives us our volume flow. However, the calculation for accumulation distribution is done differently. Here, there are certain key values that are taken from the bar. The difference between the close and the high, and the difference between the close and the low. This is then compared to the entire range of the bar, and this gives us what's called our multiplier, or money flow multiplier. Now, by plugging in some hypothetical values, this will help us understand how this multiplier works. So let's take an example where we have a bar that actually closes at the high. So the value of the close is equal to the high here. And so if you plug those values in, you'll see that the multiplier in this case is plus one. And this means that when the bar ends on a high, all of the volume will be attributed to the buyers who've pushed the bar up to that level. Whereas if a bar closes at its low, so the close is equal to the low, and we plug those values in, we can see that here, the multiplier has a value of minus one. And so when the bar does close on the low, all of the volume gets attributed to the sellers. But of course, more often than not, that won't happen and the close price will be somewhere in between. And based on that ratio, it will determine how much of the volume is attributed to buyers and how much to sellers. And so it's this difference in the calculation that aims at providing a much more realistic volume flow. So next, the 
accumulation distribution calculation is actually very similar to OBV, except this time we're using that multiplier value to determine how much volume is added or subtracted from the previous value. And remember that that multiplier value always ranges from a maximum of plus one all the way down to a minimum value of minus one. So this should produce a more accurate volume flow compared with the more coarse approach taken by OBV by allocating an appropriate proportion of volume to the indicator. So let's now compare OBV and AD on a chart. So at the top, obviously, we have the price action here. The middle blue section is the OBV and the bottom yellow indicator is the accumulation distribution. And as you can see, broadly speaking, they follow the same pattern. However, there are differences. So for example, if we look at the right hand side of the chart over here, we can see that at the end, the accumulation distribution is actually making new highs, whereas that's not the case for OBV. So let's now compare a specific example. Let's concentrate on the price action between the two green bars. As we can see, the price is going up and so are both of the indicators. So broadly speaking, they're in agreement. But now let's move forward to the next section of price action. Here, the price continues up, although on a slightly weaker slope. But if we look at the two indicators, this is where we begin to see a difference. The OBV is also going up with a similar strength to what it was before, whereas the AD indicator is fairly flat. So if we categorize both of these, we could say that OBV does not have a divergence currently, whereas the AD does. Now, when we see a divergence, that's often a sign that the trend is weakening. And following that, we might see a reversal. Now, in this particular case, look what happens to the price. It reverses extremely strongly. And it's the AD indicator that predicted this, not the OBV. So does this mean that AD is better than on balance volume? Well, we've already said that the calculation seems to make a lot more sense and should give us more accurate results. And so the volume flow from it should be closer to reality than with OBV. But what I would recommend to you is that you study charts for yourself using both of these indicators and you look for those divergences. And specifically, if you're trying to determine which of these indicators works best, look for when each of those indicators gives you a different signal. Now, I'm going to set you a challenge. I'd like you to study a variety of different charts, maybe Forex, stock indices, commodities, and go through this process that you've seen me go through today and perform this comparison of OBV with accumulation distribution. Come to your own conclusion. Which do you think provides the more reliable signals? And what I'd like you to do, if possible, is to post your conclusions in the comments of this YouTube video. And by doing that, let's get a much wider consensus across all of the viewers of the video as to which of these appears to be the best. Now, next time, I'm going to cover a further volume-based indicator called the Money Flow Index. So please do make sure that you tune in for that episode. If you're wondering who Darwin X is and what we can offer to traders like you, then you can click on the link that's under the video link here. And that will take you to the Darwin X website where you can find out more information. But now, until next time, trade wise, trade safe.